O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God has spoken by his prophet, spoken his unchanging word, each from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. Mid the world's despair and turmoil, one firm anchor holdeth fast. God is King, his throne eternal, God the first and God the last. God has spoken by Christ Jesus, Christ the everlasting Son, brightness of the Father's glory with the Father ever one, spoken by the Word incarnate, God of God, a time began. Light of light to earth descending, man revealing God to man. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your hour is deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger all my body is sick. Through my sin there is no health in my limbs. My guilt has higher than my head. It is a way too heavy to bear. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. O Lord, you know all my longing. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick. Spent and utterly crushed. I cry aloud in anguish of heart. O oh Lord, you know my longing, my groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength is spent, the very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper, those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay stairs. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm, planning treachery all the day long. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you know all my longing. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not forsake me, my Saviour. But I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the dumb unable to speak. I'm like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defence. 
I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do let, let them mock me. Those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My want and enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good, and attack me for seeking what is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste and come to my help. O Lord, my God, my Saviour, Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not forsake me, my Saviour. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. A reading from the book of Exodus. On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone forth out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. And when they set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped in the wilderness and there Israel encamped before the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported these words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, and the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready by the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set bounds for the people round about, saying, Take heed that you do not go up into the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be ready by the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mountain, and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. 
and Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain quaked, gent quake, quaked gently. And so the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. Now when all the people perceived the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood afar off, and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will hear. But let not God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to prove you and that the fear of him may be before your eyes, that you may not sin. And the people stood afar off, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness, where God was. If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession among all peoples, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. A reading from the treaties of Saint Irenaeus against the heresies. In Deuteronomy, Moses says to the people, The Lord your God made a covenant with you in Horeb. Not with your fathers did the Lord make this covenant, but with you. Why did the Lord not make the covenant with your fathers? Because the law is not laid down for the just. Your fathers lived just lives because they had the meaning of the Decalogue implanted in their hearts and minds. That is, they loved God, who made them, and did their neighbour no injury. So they did not need to be warned by written prohibitions, for they had the righteousness of the law in their hearts. When, however, in Egypt the righteousness and this love towards God were forgotten and became extinct, God was compelled by his deep love towards men, to reveal himself by a voice. With power he led his people out of Egypt, so that man, again, might become the disciple of God and follow him. So that they might not despise their creator, he punished those who were disobedient. He fed them with manna, so that they might have spiritual food. As Moses says in Deuteronomy, he fed you with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but that man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. He taught them to love God <clears throat> and instill in them that righteousness which is towards their neighbour. In this way they might be neither unjust nor unworthy of God. By the Decalogue he instructed men to be friends with himself and in harmony with their neighbour. Man is greatly helped by these things. God, however, stands in need of nothing from man. These blessings made man glorious, giving him what he lacked, friendship with God. They bestow nothing on God, for God did not stand in need of man's love. Man did not have the glory of God. The only way that man could receive this glory was by obeying God. Therefore Moses said, Choose life that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God and obeying his voice and cleaving to him. For that means life to you and length of days. To prepare man for this life, God himself, God himself spoke the words of the Decalogue to all men alike. And so these words remain with us too. 
By his coming in the flesh, God did not abrogate them. He extended and augmented them. As for the precepts which enslaved, however, God imposed these on his people separately through Moses. These precepts were well devised to instruct or punish them. As Moses himself said, the Lord commanded me at that same time to teach you statutes and ordinances. But by the new covenant of liberty, God cancelled those provisions which he had given to his people to enslave them and serve the purpose of a sign. At the same time, the laws, which are natural and appropriate to free men and are applicable to all without distinction, were amplified and widened. Out of the abundance of his love, without grudging, God adopted men as his sons and granted that they might know God as Father and love him with all their heart and follow his word without turning aside. Moses, the servant of the Lord, fasted for forty days and forty nights, so that he might be prepared to receive the law of the Lord. Moses went up to the mountain of Sinai to the Lord, and stayed there for forty days and forty nights, so that he might be prepared to receive the law of the Lord. Let us pray. Purify us, Almighty God, through our wholehearted endeavour to renew our lives, so that we may approach the coming festival with single-minded devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 